Hi there, this is Morgan with Morgan Burke's Photography and Product Shop. And today I'm gonna to show you how to apply a circular blur to the background of your photo. Um, so this is something that naturally occurs in some lenses. In this photo, you'll notice, you can see that it, it already has a little bit of this effect here. So I'm gonna show you how to create this from scratch or kind of enhance it if you already have a little bit of this going on in your photos. Um, so this is just a sort of quick way to do this. Um, so what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to duplicate my background layer. I'm going to do that by dragging it over the little sheet of paper icon. And then when you let it go, it'll duplicate. Um, and then I'm going to grab my lasso tool. If you have um, one of these other tools showing here, you can right click on it and you can find the one you need from the menu here. So I'm just going to choose the lasso tool and I'm going to draw a rough selection around my subject here. This does not have to be perfect. Um, it's just to kind of make our life a little easier when we apply the effect. Okay, so I'm gonna create that selection around her. And so what I'm gonna do and what I suggest doing, if you're gonna apply any type of blur to the background of your photo, is to either clone your subject out a little bit so that when you apply the blur effect, your subject isn't included in that blur. Um, now, if you've ever tried to blur a background and you notice like a halo of color that matches your subject around them, this is this is going to prevent that. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to go to edit, fill, and then we're going to make sure this says content aware. Um, now you can play around with the settings in here. I'm just going to leave it at the default and hit OK. And I find that it generally does a pretty good job. So um, this is going to completely remove our subject from the photo, which will allow us to have that, you know, blurred background effect without the subject included. Um, now, if you're not, if this is kind of confusing for you, just skip it. We're just going to do this because it's going to make our life easier. Just take my word for it, I promise. Okay, so I'm going to hit Control or Command D to just get rid of that little selection. And you'll notice that you have your whole background here, no subject on it. Uh, this is perfect. So this is what we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Filter and we're going to go to Blur. And then we're going to select Radial Blur from the menu. And radial blur has two um, different blur methods. One is called spin. The other one is called zoom. Uh, zoom kind of makes it to where the edges of the frame sort of look like they're, they're moving towards you, where spin sort of makes it look like it's blurring in a circular pattern. Um, if I Feel free to experiment with these and just see which ones you like better. For this method, I'm gonna choose the spin method. And um, I find that an amount of two is generally all I really need. Um, but again, feel free to go further with this or experiment to your own liking. Um, down here, quality, I usually just leave it at good. You can feel free to experiment with those as well. Um, so I'm going to hit an amount of two. I find that one is a little, is, is not quite enough, and three is just a little too much. So two is pretty good. Um, and then you can turn the opacity down of your layer afterwards if you want to just, you know, adjust the effect a little more from there. So with an amount of two, I'm just going to hit OK here. And that might take a second to apply. Okay, so you'll notice our effect has been applied. Now you can go ahead and turn the opacity down here and just you know see what you like. Um, you'll notice your subject starts to pop through here. It actually works better for us. We are just gonna add a layer mask to this layer, um, which is right down here, this rectangular button with a circle inside. We're gonna add a layer mask, grab a paintbrush with the color set to black, um, I'm using 100% opacity. You can adjust that if you want to. And I'm just gonna paint my subject right back into the photo. So we're just gonna make sure that this blur is off of her. And you can be precise with this if you want. I find that with this type of creative effect, um, I don't have to be super precise, but if you were applying um, like a different type of background blur, uh, you might wanna be a little bit more, get a little closer to the edges and, and be a little more precise with this. Okay, so now you can just turn your effect on and off and you can see the difference here. If you notice any, any issues, like where the color is still over her, you can remove it at 100% opacity just by running your brush over it. And then you can adjust and see. Now what you can do here is you can also turn this opacity back up if you want it higher. Um, you can even start at zero and you can see, you know, bring it up just enough to where you like it um, or go all the way up if you want it to be super noticeable. Um, so with this photo, I, was, I shot this with a 200 millimeter lens, so there was already some of that blur back there like I talked about, and there were these big circular um, bokeh effects back there that kind of enhanced the circular effect a little bit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you this effect on another photo where I shot it with a different lens. This one was taken with my 50 millimeter lens, um, and well, don't quote me on that, it might've been my 85. 
pretty sure it was the 50, sorry. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same method, but I'm gonna show you another little trick you can do to kind of um, make it a little more impactful. So again, we're just gonna duplicate our background layer, drag it right over that sheet of paper icon, uh, lasso tool, rough selection right around your subject. And then edit, fill, content aware, hit okay. Okay, again, control or command D to get rid of that selection. And then what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna duplicate this just in case. Sometimes uh, when you're messing around with a, a background blur, if you're not sure what amounts you're gonna use on your filter, um, sometimes what I like to do is just duplicate the background copy where our subject has been removed. So you have two of those copies now. Um, that way if I make a mistake or I delete it, I don't have to go back and do the selection around my subject all over again. Um, that's personal preference. You definitely don't have to do that. Um, just something to think about if you would like to. Uh, so I'm on the top background layer here, I'm gonna show you, um, first we're gonna sharpen the background to make the, the texture in the background a little more noticeable um, to sort of help that blur be, well, noticeable. So um, what we're gonna do first is just go to filter and we are gonna go sharpen, unsharp mask. Now, if you are sharpening this photo, just you know, to, to create a sharpness on your photo, you'd wanna be um, a little softer than what we're gonna do here. I'm just gonna sweep around until I find a good section of, okay. So as you can see, this is a little bit too crispy if you were gonna leave this sharpness on your photo. Um, but in this case, I'm gonna sharpen it first so that the edges are strong and then we're gonna blur over it. So it kind of negates the extra sharpness we're adding. Um, I just want to make sure you're aware of that just in case you don't, you know, it looks good right here, but if you zoomed into this photo uh, at 100%, the sharpness actually kind of looks a little terrible. So since we're applying a blur over it, it's totally fine. Um, we're just gonna keep going. Okay, so I'm gonna hit okay. And this amount is 160, the radius is 9.9. .9. You can play with these um, and increase these as much as you want. I don't want to go too strong. Um, I just want the edges of the textured leaves and stuff in the background, the little circular effects here, to be strong and sharp. So I think somewhere right in here is, is good. Um, and then again, you can adjust the amount. Again, since we're applying a blur over this, it's not super important what you choose, just as long as there's some, some sharpness added here. I'm actually gonna turn this down a little just because I don't like the darkness it created in the trees. So I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. Um, and then hit okay. All right, so once that sharpness has been added, then we can go ahead and go to filter, blur, radial blur, just like we did last time. And our settings will be saved from the last time we used it. Spin method, amount of two, and I'm just gonna hit okay. Okay, so you'll see there's that effect there. I'm gonna turn this off for a second and go to our other background copy that we made. And I'm gonna blur this one without the sharpness so you can kind of see the difference. So we're gonna to go to blur, radial blur. Again, same settings, spin, amount of two, and hit okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so here is that one, and then here is with the sharpness added. So it's not super different. Um, it just, I think that it enhances the effect a little because you can see the edges um, a little more. Now this is definitely a personal preference. If you don't find that it's that much of a difference, you can avoid that extra step. Um, but as you can see, again, I'll turn it off and it's a little softer and on, you can see those edges a little more clearly here. So again, totally up to you. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use the sharper one. So I'm going to turn off this middle background layer here, um, and then add a layer mask. And since our layer mask is white, that means that this effect is showing everywhere. So I wanna remove it from my subject. Now you can turn your opacity down here to make this easier on you like we did in the other one, or you could invert this layer mask. So you could turn it black by hitting Control or Command I on your keyboard. And now this effect is applied nowhere. So the difference here is that whereas before we kind of just painted it off our subject, here you can actually paint the effect onto your photo. So what you'll do is you'll grab a paintbrush set to white since our layer mask is black, and now you can paint the blur in where you want it. So if you only wanted it in certain areas, you can do that here with the brush. And so let's say you wanted to leave it off of the center of your photo, 
um, to just sort of make it like the edge, the edge um, of the image only. And you could switch your brush back to black if you go a little bit too far and you paint over your subject. Um, but then you can see your um, effect here, turn it on and off to see what you think. Um, and then you can turn the opacity down again. So I would probably do maybe about 50 or so on this photo. I kind of like it to be enough that when you're looking at the image as a whole, you don't really notice it. Um, but when you stop to look at the details in the photo, you can kind of, you know, see what's going on there. So it's definitely personal preference. So feel free to turn that up as high as you'd like. Um, that's it for today. Uh, if you'd like, you can find more free tutorials on my website at morganburks.com, or you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Morgan Burks Photography. If you have any questions, you can email me at morgan at morganburks.com. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.